Greetings everyone, I am Mark Lester Hamila, and in this video, we will be talking about cybercrime and software piracy. Okay, so what is cybercrime? Cybercrime is criminal activity that either targets or uses a computer, computer network, or network device. Most, but not all, cybercrime is committed by cybercriminals or hackers who want to make money. Cybercrime is carried out by individuals or organizations. Some cybercriminals are organized, use advanced techniques, and are highly technically skilled. Other are novice hackers. Rarely, cybercrime aims to damage computers for reasons other than profit. This could be political or personal. There are three major categories of cybercrime, and these are individual, property, and government. The types of methods used and difficulty levels vary depending on the category. First is property. This is similar to a real-life instance of a criminal illegally possessing as individual's bank or credit card details. The hackers steal a person's bank details to gain access to funds, make purchases online, or run phishing scams to get people to give away their information. They could also use a malicious software to gain access to a web to a web page with confidential information. Next is individual. This category of cybercrime involves one individual distributing malicious or illegal information online. This can include cyber stalking, distributing pornography, and trafficking. Next is government. This is the least common cybercrime, but is the most serious offense. A crime against the government is also known as cyber terrorism. Government cybercrime includes hacking government website, military website, or distributing propaganda. These criminals are usually terrorists or enemy governments of other nations. Types of cybercrime DDoS attacks. These are used to make an online service unavailable and take the network down by overwhelming the site with traffic from a variety of sources. Large networks or infected devices known as bootnets are created by depositing malwares on users' computers. The hacker then hacks into the system once the network is down. Next is bootnets. Bootnets are networks from compromised computers that are controlled externally by remote hackers. The remote hackers then send spam or attack other computers through their bootnets. Bootnets can be also used to act as malware and perform malicious tasks. Next is identity theft. This cybercrime occurs when a criminal gain access to a user's personal information to steal funds, access confidential information, or participate in tax or health insurance food. They can also open a phone and or internet account in your name Use your name to plan a criminal activity and claim government benefits in your name. They may do this by finding out users' passwords through hacking, retrieving personal information from social media, or sending phishing emails. Next is cyberstalking. This kind of cybercrime involves online harassment where the user is subjected to a plethora of online messages and emails. Typically, cyberstalkers use social media websites, and search engines to intimidate a user and instill fear. Usually, cyberstalker knows their victim and make the person feel afraid or concerned for their safety. Next is social engineering. Social engineering involves criminals making direct contact with you, usually by phone or email. They want to gain your confidence and usually pose as a customer service agent so you'll give the necessary information needed. This is typically a password, the company of your work, or bank information. Cyber criminals will find out what they can about you on the internet and then attempt to add you as a friend on social media accounts. Once they gain access to an account, they, they can sell your information or secure accounts in your name. Next is PUPs. PUPs or potentially unwanted programs are less threatening than other cybercrimes, but are type of malware. They uninstall necessary software in your system, including search engines and pre-downloaded apps. 
they can include spyware or adware. So it's a good idea to install an antivirus software to avoid the malicious downloads. Next is phishing. This type of attack involves hackers sending malicious email attachments or URLs to users to gain access to their accounts or computer. Cyber criminals are becoming more established and many of these emails are not flagged as spam. Users are tricked into emails claiming they need to change their password or update their billing information, giving criminals access. Next is prohibited or illegal content. This cybercrime involves criminals sharing and distributing inappropriate content that can be considered highly distressing and offensive. Offensive content can include, but is not limited to, sexual activity between adults, videos with intense, violent, and videos of criminal activity. Illegal content includes materials advocating terrorism-related acts and child exploitation material. This type of content exists both on the everyday internet and on the dark web, an anonymous network. Next is online scams. These are usually in the form of ads or spam emails that include promises of rewards, or offers of unrealistic amount of money. Online scams include enticing offers that are too good to be true. And when click on, can cause malware to interfere and compromise information. Next is exploit kits. Exploit kits need a vulnerability tag in the code of a software in order to gain control of a user's computer. They are ready-made tools criminals can buy online and use against anyone with a computer. The exploit kits are upgraded regularly similar to normal software and are available on dark web hacking forums. Our next topic is software piracy. Software piracy is a term used to describe the act of illegally using, copying, or distributing software without ownership or legal rights. The majority of software today is purchased as a single user license, meaning that only one computer may have that software installed on it. The majority of software today is purchased as a single user license, meaning that only one computer may have that software installed on it at one time. Copying that software to multiple computers or sharing it with your friends without multiple licenses is considered software piracy, which is illegal. Additionally, downloading pirated software from the internet could be a security risk to your computer. It can be difficult to know what else may be getting installed. Types of software piracy. First is counterfeiting, internet piracy, and user piracy, client server overuse, hard disk loading. So there are five main types of software piracy. First is counterfeiting. This type of piracy is the illegal duplication, distribution, and or sale of copyrighted material with the intent of imitating the copyrighted product. In the case of packaged software, it is common to find counterfeit copies of the compact disk incorporating the software programs, as well as related packaging, manuals, license agreements, labels, registration cards, and security features. Next is internet piracy. This occurs when software is downloaded from the internet. The same purchasing rules apply to online software purchases as for those who bought in compact disk format. Common internet piracy techniques are websites that make software available for free download or in exchange for others. Internet auction sites that offer counterfeit or out-of-channel software. Peer-to-peer -peer networks that enable an authorized transfer of copyrighted programs. Okay, next is end-user piracy. This occurs when an individual reproduces copies of software without authorization. This include using one licensed copy to install a program on multiple computers, copying this for installation or distribution, taking advantage of upgrade offers without having a legal copy of the version to be upgraded, acquiring academic or other restricted or non-retail software without a proper license, 
swapping disk, or outside the workplace. Next is client-server overuse. This type of piracy occurs when too many users on a network are using a central copy of a program at the same time. If you have a local area network and install programs on the server for several people to use, you have to be sure your license entitles you to do so. If you have more users than allowed by the license, that's overuse. Next is hard disk loading. This occurs when a business sells new computers with illegal copies of software loaded onto the hard disk to make the purchase of the machines more attractive. So that's all for the topic on this video and hope you learn. Thanks for watching.